What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to Headlocks and Hot Packs. We have some basketball cards today. As you can see, this is a jumbo box of 1994 classic basketball draft. There are 21 cards per pack and 20 jumbo packs per box of this. Of course, this is the draft class uh, where on the top of the box here, we have the number one pick, the big dog, Glenn Robinson. Uh, as well as Grant Hill, Jason Kidd, uh, and there are some NBA players in here as well, such as Shaq, uh, Hakeem Olajuwon, Dikembe Mutombo. Those guys are part of a subset of NBA centers. Uh, there's also an all-rookie team subset, which features Penny Hardaway and Chris Webber. Uh, here's a look at the bottom of the box with odds. There are also inserts as well, such as the calling cards, uh, Dickie V's PT Piers, and then on the side here, there are SPs in the base set as well, which look like this. These are illustrated cards, last five cards of the set. So you have like Charlie Ward, uh, I think Jawan Howard has one, and possibly uh, maybe Chris Weber too. I can't quite remember all of them, but let's get to ripping. We've got a bunch to get through. Hopefully everyone's having a good day today. Uh, you can find autographs in 94 Classic Draft, however I'm not, I don't believe, <clears throat> I don't believe that you can find them in this box. I think that they were just part of a promo. And now the real test for this is going to be to see if these cards are stuck together or not. So here's a look at the pack. And let us find out if we can actually get these pulled apart. If not, we may have to uh, come back after trying to... Oh, um... They are stuck together. However, it feels like they're going to come apart pretty easily, so... We'll try a few here and see what happens. Yeah, not too bad at all. So here is a look at the base cards. There's Brian Reese there. And here's the back. You can also find players like uh, Eddie Jones in here, Daniel Marshall, which there's the Daniel Marshall right there. He was the number four pick. Of course, we're going to be trying to put together the whole base set. Yeah, like I said, these are sticking, but... They're not sticking badly at all whatsoever, so this box has been very well taken care of. There's a Celtic there, that's Greg Miner. Kendrick Warren. You can see we got an insert coming up in the middle there. There's also uh, parallels as well, which are artist proofs or gold cards. There's Charlie Ward, the Heisman winner, who uh, of course didn't play in the NFL and ended up going to the New York Knicks. There's our first SP. There's Eric Montross, and here is a look at the back. Of course, he's a former Celtic. And here's our first insert. It's a game card of Jawan Howard. And you can scratch the back of that there. I remember having the Glenn Robinson when I was younger. Back to some more base here. There's Damon Key. Aaron McKee had a pretty good career. Of course, his uh, best years were with the 76ers, those Allen Iverson teams, uh, one of which made the NBA Finals. Here's our first NBA player, Jamal Mashburn. That is the, slowly peel that off. That's the all rookie team subset. And a look at the back. We have Joey Brown from the Hoyas. I'm gonna try and move through these as quickly as I can, but I just don't want them. I'm trying to avoid paper loss here. Joey Brown, Brian Grant had a good NBA career with the Blazers and the Kings. Let's see. We see a center card coming up. Find out who it is. There's Dion Thomas. Dick Vitale, who provided um, a lot of the write-ups on the back of the cards. There's the Centers of Attention subset. That's Hakeem, the Hall of Famer there. And again, the back is just basically the same as the rest of the base cards. Melvin Booker, and then finally Thomas Hamilton. Try to speed things up as much as we can here. But then again, who's got anything better to do, right? 
We have Brooks Thompson, slight ding on the top right, but it's only Brooks Thompson. Looks like we have a repeat of our insert coming up in the middle there. Actually, we got a repeat of the SP coming up as well. Clayton Ritter, there's the Matumbo. Hopefully everybody's see that okay. Peel that off. Greg Miner again. There, well, there's Montross. Sometimes it's easier to peel from the back. We got a repeat pack, it looks like. Which does happen. Greg Miner again. Nothing stuck to the back. Cards aren't super thick, but gotta make sure that there's not another one stuck on the back. Lots of repeats in this pack here. It's Hamilton again. Yeah, we pretty much saw all of these. Another Hakeem. Looks like the same correlation, basically the same correlation as well. There's the Mashburn again. One was a little more stuck than the rest. But again, as long as you take your time, Michael Smith, didn't see that one before. As long as you take your time with these, you know, they will come apart with no paper loss at all. Of course, that's not always the case. Don't always have lady luck on your side. But we got lucky this time around. There we have Alonzo Morning. I'm going to try and go from the back, actually, because it's just easier to peel them that way. Randy Blocker there. Yvonne Scales. J.R. Ryder, or Isaiah Ryder. Barry Brown. I know that crinkling sound is very discomforting for a lot of card collectors. There's a couple stuck. There we go. BJ Tyler there. And Tony Dumas is how you pronounce that. This is a checklist. Checklist there. Anthony Goldwire. I think he ended up with the Hornets. Our third game card. Of course, we saw two of the Juwan Howards already. I hope we find uh, some other... Well, here's a cool SP. There is, um... That's the big dog, uh, Glenn Robinson, but... Look at the face there. Does that not look like David Robinson to you? Especially because they have him dunking with his left hand. Very unusual. He looks exactly like David Robinson there. That is... Wacky. Andre Fedosov there... Monty Williams, who uh, many people know as a coach now these days. Abdul Fox. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's no relation to Rick Fox. Kelvin Salvadori. There's uh, Dickie Simpkins. People that were watching The Last Dance will remember him. He was a member of the Bulls. Another all-rookie team there, Chris Mills, which is uh, unusual that he would be part of their old rookie team. Uh, Albert Burdett. Three more in this pack here. Wesley Person. I believe he is the younger younger brother of Chuck Person, I'm pretty sure. And then there was the morning again. So we'll slide those over. The goings are slow. Doesn't help that uh well of course doesn't help that they're stuck together, but also that these are jumbo packs. I think we'll have some more repeats on the back here. Yeah, there's Randy Blocker again. And looks like we have the exact same game card again, so the collation on these packs is not the greatest. Barry Brown once more. Yeah, while well, I was looking up uh, about this set on Trading Card Database, it does show that Shaquille O'Neal has a couple of autographs as part of the set, but like I said, same checklist again. Um, I'm pretty sure that they only are part of promos, so I would be floored if we found one. There's David, quote-unquote, Robinson again. I'd be floored if we found one in this box. It would be shocking. Howard Isley there, a decent career. Sharon Wright, he was a lottery pick. Damon Bailey, 
with looks like a piece of little printing error on his nameplate there, but I'm sure that's okay because uh, I probably will find another one of those in this box somewhere. There's Eric Montross, his base card, regular base card, not the SP, obviously. Chris Mills again, Galen Nickerson, and we, there was Albert Burdett on the back of Damon Bailey there. And on to pack number four. Let's start getting some some of the good players here. Haven't seen uh, Jason Kidd or Grant Hill yet. Steve Woodbury. A lot of these guys I'm not familiar with. I'm sure they probably ended up being uh, undrafted free agents that never never made it to the NBA. Jamie Watson is uh, not one of those. Draft pick of the Houston Jazz. They're Houston Jazz, Utah Jazz. There is uh, Jalen Rose, another member of the Fab Five. One of the better cards in this set. Steve Smith, one of the 10,000 10, Steve Smiths there have been in the history of pro sports. Lawrence Funderburk. I believe he ended up with Sacramento. And there's a cool looking Jason Kidd. Another SP there, the illustration card. And that one actually actually does look like Jason Kidd, so pretty cool there. Another game card here. That is Sharon Wright. Of course he never never did did much in his career. Was a lottery pick of the Sixers. Also played with the Toronto Raptors. Khalid Reeves, Miami Heat there, and there's the Eddie Jones, he was I believe pick number 10 to the Lakers, really good value draft pick and he would go on to be an all-star, um, had some probably his best years in Charlotte alongside uh, Glenn Rice, there is the Shaquille O'Neal centers of attention, I may have that one. And here's another Charlie Ward, the two-sport star. There he is, quarterbacking the Florida State Seminoles. Like I said, he won the Heisman that year, but chose to play basketball instead. And I feel like that would not be the case these days. We see, we've seen guys like Kyler Murray choose football over baseball. But, of course, he ended up being the number one pick. And I do not believe... If I'm recalling correctly, that Charlie Ward was projected to be a high draft pick, which is likely why he chose basketball. He had a decent uh, hoops career, though. Had some. Uh, it was a solid, solid role player for the New York Knicks. There's Jalen Rose again. Got some more repeats. Steve Smith, and I would be willing to bet our game card is probably Sharon Wright again. And let's find out. There's another Jason Kidd. So there's Sharon Wright one more time. And we got all repeats in this pack, I believe. Classic needed to do better with their quality control. Trevor Ruffin. Antonio Wingfield. Of course, uh, card companies seem to be a lot better with card control these days. You don't really find that you're getting the exact same collation in packs whenever you're picking them up so much improved from 25 years ago boy that'll really make you feel old saying 25 years technically 26 years since since this was released we found the Jason Kidd SP, still looking for his regular base, as well as Grant Hill. We haven't seen any other inserts besides the game cards. There's Alonzo again. Aaron Swinson. And there's the number one pick, the big dog, Glenn Robinson. Of course, his son plays in the NBA now, Glenn Robinson III. Billy McCaffrey. We'll start going from the back now. 
but that one peeled a little bit harder. Juwan Howard, there's the other Fab Five member there. And there may be one more in here, I can't remember. I'm trying to remember what year Jimmy Key came out. It might have been 95-96. Yinkadare, go to the Nets. I think he was a lottery pick too. Chuck Graham. Travis Ford. And then Penny Hardaway, all rookie team. Can't remember if I got that one. And there's the Glenn Robinson game card. Yep, yeah, this is the one that I had when I was a kid. So that's pretty cool to get that back. And there's the Juwan Howard short print. Of course, short prints back then would not be short prints today because there were so many of them made. And as you can see, we've gotten one in every pack thus far. So how short of a print is a short print really? Just about halfway through the box here. Derek Phelps there, Sean Leonard was a lights out shooter for the Miami Heat, Let's see who else we can find, still looking for Grant Hill and Jason Kidd, haven't seen any Grant Hill anything, there's Glenn Robinson again, and it's some of the same collation, so here comes our Glenn Robinson game card. Put, you can pretty much put money on that's going to be what it is. There's a new one. Patrick Ewing, Centers of Attention. And our SP is behind this. It's probably Howard again. And yep, there's Juwan again. And Big Dog Glenn Robinson, followed by another, another Penny Hardaway. And Travis Ford, Chuck Graham. So again, same collation. Yinkadare. Start going from the back. Well, maybe not. Sean L. Scott. Byron Starks. Uh, looks like we got two behind him. Juwan Howard again. And this last one is being a little bit tricky. There we go, we got it. And another Sean Tarver. In case anyone was wondering, this was an eBay purchase, and I grabbed this for $18.99, so not too shabby at all, considering, there's Hakeem again, considering uh, the price of basketball cards are, has been just silly with uh, the Zion craze, and then... You had on top of that people being stuck at home in the last dance coming out, so everyone went went cuckoo for Jordans as well. So hopefully things will settle back in. It's a little bit of a mixed mixed bag when you know there's the Jason Kid, very nice Jason Kid, very good shape. It's a little bit of a mixed feeling. Uh, what's going on in the hobby right now for me? And there's the Jason Kidd game card, so very nice. And the Charlie Ward SP. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit of mixed feelings for me because it's it's great that the hobby is doing well and people are coming in, but at the same time, I'm not a big fan of people picking up $20 blaster boxes and there's a Chris Weber all-rookie team and reselling them for like four times what they're worth, so people that actually want the cards to collect them and not sell them can't afford to buy them honestly so it's a little bit of a I don't want to say tough tough situation but it's just it's good and bad at the same time if, in my opinion anyways um, which is why I, I will buy stuff like this which you know there's no NBA license because the NBA players, you know, don't have team logos or anything like that, which a lot of people don't really like those cards. And obviously college cards aren't nearly as popular as uh, NBA licensed cards. So you can usually get these for cheaper. So that's why I go for them because 
you know, I just, I like collecting cards, I enjoy opening them, you know, I'm not looking to make a million dollars or anything like that, and, you know, I will sell things, but the only cards I ever sell, honestly, are stuff that I don't collect anymore, like football, um, but other than that, any baseball or basketball you see from me on, like, eBay, it's all doubles. All stuff I've got more than one one of. So, you know, I don't I don't need more than one of certain things. So, you know, you try to get rid of them and I don't, you know, I don't ask crazy prices or anything like that. I might have a couple things on there. You know, I still want fair value. Uh, for example, I've had a autographed Russell Westbrook card that I've been selling for a couple hundred dollars. But different case because it doesn't belong to me and I'm selling it for a friend so you know if that was mine I'd be keeping it but I'm not gonna pay $200 to anybody for for a card so it won't be part of my collection so I offered to sell it for them um, or another example I've had there's Eric Montross again I've had a 2001 Daytona 500 ticket stub, which was uh, my ticket stub from that race, and of course that was Dale Earnhardt's final race, but uh, I've been trying to sell that on eBay as well, I ended up getting it graded, uh, the only item I've ever gotten graded, hey there's the Grant Hill we've been looking for, so very nice, let's be careful peeling that, that bad boy off, it's a little more stuck but not too bad. There's a quick glimpse at the back. Of course, Grant Hill's a Hall of Famer. Uh, but yeah, I've been trying to sell that ticket stub because I am not a NASCAR fan. That was, you know, I went to that race just on a whim. I was uh, 15 years old. And a friend of mine called me, you know, an hour before they were leaving. This was before February break. And I guess his cousin had gotten grounded and wasn't going to be going anymore, so... I got a free trip to the Daytona 500, so, you know, who who wouldn't take that? And it just ended up being uh, the final race of Dale Earnhardt's senior's career, so... Happened to luck into owning a decently valued piece of NASCAR history, but I'm not a NASCAR fan, so I got no use for it, so... And that's unusual. Look at our top card there. Look how dented that is. That's weird. I'm not sure how that would happen in the middle of the box. Uh, starting to see basically all repeats now from the base set. So at this point, we're just looking for inserts that we have not come across yet, which we have only found the game cards yet. Have not found any of the sprint calling cards. And look at that. Right on cue, we found a sprint calling card. That was weird, as soon as I said it. So I'm sure a lot of people remember these. This is back in the day before cell phones were a huge thing. You could use this on, I believe, a payphone. Um, so pretty cool. It's not a, you know, great player or anything like that. It's Yankadare. But still cool nonetheless. And uh, oddly enough, speaking about Dale Earnhardt, I, have a, I also have been trying to sell a Dale Earnhardt calling card that came in like a huge sports card collection um, that I bought from, I don't even remember now, I think it might have been Salvation Army, but it was just randomly thrown in there, and again, nothing I collect, so just looking to move it on to somebody else who will enjoy it uh, more than me, uh, which shouldn't be hard because I, again, don't enjoy it at all because I'm not a NASCAR fan, so... <laughs> All right, we are definitely more than halfway through now. And the packs are starting to... Well, this couple have given me a little bit of trouble. A little bit of trouble. And there we go. Of course, we see another game card, so... There's Brian Reese there. Daniel Marshall again. Sean Crudup. Charlie Wood. 
some more Jamie Watson action. Another Jalen Rose. David Glenn Robinson. <laughs> Daniel Marshall game card. Darren Hancock. Jamal Mashburn. Michael Smith. Bill Curley. It looks like the insert is going to always be... That was Eddie Jones there. Always in the middle, too, so... Maybe we'll find a different kind of calling card before we finish this box out completely. Gonna try and move things along a little bit quicker. Now with all the repeats. And because we're already 25 minutes in to this box opening. So ain't no time like the present. So we'll go from the back. Yeah, Wingfield again, another Khalid Reeves, another Eddie Jones. I think we've seen four of those Eddie Jones at this point. Charlie Ward. So I may see... So what I'll do is, um, is I'll pull out all the stars and everything to put in my PC of singles. And then any of the Celtic players I don't have as well and then from there I will see if I can't put together a set for me to keep and then if I have enough to do more than one I will put together another and probably put that on eBay for oh, I don't know maybe like ten dollars or so we'll see how it goes another Charlie Ward there Clayton Ritter Definitely seems to move a lot quicker if I'm pulling from the back there. And then the last card was Steve Woodbury. Looks like we got one, two, six more packs remaining. So again, we'll just rifle right through these as, much, as quickly as possible. Really appreciate everybody who tunes into this channel very much so. Hopefully, uh, you like what we got going on and have subscribed. Definitely want to, uh, try and get another giveaway in at some point once we start hitting, um, subscriber, I guess, goals or plateaus, if you want to call it that, like the 50 and 100 subscriber mark. I've got plenty of things I can give away. I was thinking about uh, maybe a grab bag. Hey, another calling card, and that's a much better one than the last. Jalen Rose. So very cool. $2 sprint calling card. Uh, but yeah, I still uh, I do have grab bags that I'm selling on eBay. Football, baseball, and basketball. In terms of value I would say the basketball ones are the best because there's some pretty good stuff in there especially um, if you hit one of the grab bags that has a Jordan in there um, and who knows what else is along with it you could find some good rookies one there I know there's a Trey Young rookie card in one of those grab bags so uh, we may end up giving away something along those lines for whenever the next giveaway takes place although I'm gonna have to put a limit on it I think because the first giveaway that we did uh, ended up being won by a viewer in Canada and not that I have anything against Canada but um, the price for me to pay to give away something because somebody lives in Canada is not exactly worth it for me. And I want to say our baseball card giveaway, I think it cost me like $30, $35 to send that, that little box up to, I believe it was British Columbia, so. And plus the, you gotta fill up paperwork because our customs is just really weird. So I probably will limit it to the United States only. Sorry, Canada, I got love for you. Unless, uh, unless someone from Canada, you know, wins in their 
willing to cover the shipping costs, but I don't think that's really fair for me to do that if I'm... Oh, looks like uh, we reached the time limit on that. I think the last card that we saw was the Chris Mills there. Uh, but as I was saying, yeah, I don't think it would be fair for me to cover the shipping for someone who would win a giveaway in the United States and then ask people from Canada to cover their own. So probably the better option would just be to exclude Canada from the giveaway, unfortunately. But I like giving I like giving things away, and they. You know, the things I give away do have some value to them, but it doesn't mean I also want to spend an arm and a leg on shipping a giveaway either. Because you never know who's actually watching the content that you're producing uh, and who's just kind of jumping in because they see you got a giveaway going on. So always something to be weary of. More game card there. This is the Juwan SP. Clifford Rozier. I think he was drafted by the Warriors, I'm pretty sure. There's, you know, Warriors. That's Chris Weber there. And Funderburk again. Three packs left, people, so we're almost through here. It's kind of weird that my phone cut off like that at uh, half hour. I don't don't recall it doing that before, but I have been recording on a new phone uh, since I came back making videos. Got this new Android phone for Christmas because my iPhone, the battery basically crap to the bed and was no longer holding a charge so I got this one that we are recording on right now for Christmas it's a uh, Android blue I believe um, still not familiar with everything you know how to do everything on it like I was with the iPhone I can't tell you how long it took me to figure out how to uh, how to take a screenshot with this thing because of course I'm a stubborn man and uh, didn't want to just Google search it. That's eventually what I ended up having to do was just Google search it. There is Dikembe Mutombo again. Jamie Brandon. That was Thunderburk there. Another Steve Smith. And then Carlos Rogers. So we've reached our final two packs, everyone. And like I said uh, about the autographs, didn't think that they could be found in here. So that is no surprise to me whatsoever. It would be cool if we found uh, one more calling card, though. Especially if it was either Jason Kidd or... Grant Hill, another, speaking of Grant Hill, there he is again. The calling cards don't have, you know, a ton of value to them, obviously. Uh, but they're still pretty cool. Chuck Graham. There's another game card. There's the Jason Kidd, very nice. I do believe, Charlie Ward SP, we may have the entire game card set as well. I mean, we've gotten one in every pack. You'll have to, after every, whoop, dropped old Carl Ray Harris there. After every time I do a box opening like this, I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, if I'm trying to put a set together, I'll kind of have to dig through everything once the camera's off and the opening is completed. And then all my basketball sets, they all get their own individual binder. So we'll be doing that with these. We definitely have enough for one set, whether I have enough to pull out, you know, like the Shacks and the Penny Hardaways and that kind of stuff, and put a set together as well remains to be seen. We should be able to, although one card I have not seen, 
and I'm drawing a blank on, or starting to wonder if maybe there was one, because I can't remember, uh, after I checked the checklist on Trading Card Database, but we didn't see a Grant Hill SP, so I can't recall if he even has one or not. Say his name and he shall appear. There's Grant Hill again. So that's happened at least a couple of times during this opening already, which is pretty weird. So maybe I should go buy a Powerball ticket or something. Another Jason Kidd game card in our final pack here. There's another Charlie Ward SP. Again, how much, how short of a short print is a short print when we've gotten, I'd say, at least three of those Charlie Wards. Another Patrick Ewing there. See if we can't call Ray Harris. See if he'll stay on the pile this time. There's Wesley Person again there. The rest of these should all be just regular base. With Sean Leonard. Aaron Swinson. Another big dog, Glenn Robinson. Kevin Rankin. Sam Mitchell. And our final card is Tracy Weber out of Wis or sorry, Webster out of Wisconsin. So, we pretty much found everything that we were looking for today. Found some cool, a uh, couple of cool color and card inserts, and we'll definitely be able to put at least one set together and uh, keep some of the cool singles for the PC as well. So, thanks for tuning in, everybody. If you liked this video, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. And again, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. So, uh, again, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time here on Headlocks and Hot Packs.